Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers prior restraints, the seizure of evidence, and Miranda rights, and is brought to us by Wits It Gets It's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Policy Genius. Summer is coming to a close, and there's never been a better time to take care of all those responsibilities you've been putting on hold and getting life insurance done now. If you have anyone who relies on your financial support, whether it's a child, aging parent, or even a business partner, you need life insurance. And Policy Genius makes it super easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. In minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. And the licensed experts at Policy Genius are there to help you navigate every step of the shopping and buying process. You could save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. Eligible applicants can get covered in as little as a week. Thank to an award-winning policy option that swaps the standard medical exam requirement for a simple phone call. This exclusive policy was recently rated number one by Forbes, higher than options from Ladder, Ethos, and Bestow. With unparalleled customer service, it's no wonder that Policy Genius has earned thousands of five-star reviews across Trustpilot and Google. Head over to policygenius.com slash audit the audit to get started right now. Thanks again to Policy Genius for sponsoring this episode. On August 4th, 2021, YouTuber, activist, and flat earth advocate Austin Witson live streamed himself voicing his beliefs into a loudspeaker on the Grandview Terrace at Mount Rushmore in Pennington County, South Dakota. Before beginning his speech, Mr. Witsit informs his audience that he has already had altercations with park rangers in the area for the very same conduct. Approximately 22 minutes into his speech, two park rangers approach Mr. Witsit and order him to disband his speech. Hello, Hello sir. How are you? What's up, man? How are you doing now? I'm doing good. All right. So we're just coming back. Yeah. I want to give you every opportunity. We have the permit paperwork if you'd like to apply for a permit. We have your regulations showing you that this is not an approved area. Would you like to move? No. Okay. okay. All right. Well, so what's the, what's the yeah. decibel? So, well, no, I'm citing you for engaging in an activity. Well, let me see the law. Oh. Do you, do you know how the law works? So what I'm finish. asking, I'm going to need your ID. I don't have to give you my ID. Are you detaining me? Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay, for what? What's suspicion of what crime? If you fail to identify yourself, you're going to be detained. Right, so you, to, to detain me, you have to uh -huh. yeah, actually to ID me no, no, to no. detain me. I just have to cite you. No. So I'm citing you with 36 CFR 1.6. Which for, says what? For failing to engage or failing to get a permit for an activity. So can, I see, this, can I see the ordinance? Yes. Yeah. The Rangers inform Mr. Witsit that he is violating Section 1.6 of Title 36 of the Code of Federal Regulations by demonstrating without a permit, and attempt to provide him with a copy of the permit application. This section of the code states that the official in charge of a national park, quote, may issue a permit to authorize an otherwise prohibited or restricted activity or impose a public use limit, and prohibits, quote, engaging in an activity subject to a permit requirement imposed pursuant to this section without obtaining a permit. Additionally, Section 2.51 of Title 36 of the Code of Federal Regulations governs when the national parks allow individuals to participate in quote-unquote demonstrations, such as quote, picketing, speech-making, marching, holding vigils or religious services, and all other like forms of conduct that involve the communication or expression of views or grievances which is reasonably likely to attract a crowd or onlookers. The regulation allows groups of fewer than 26 individuals to demonstrate in certain locations that the park is designated as available for demonstrations without a permit, but groups of 26 or more are required to obtain a permit. Groups of 25 or fewer must also obtain a permit to demonstrate outside these designated areas in a national park. The Mount Rushmore National Memorial has designated six locations where individuals or groups are allowed to exercise their First Amendment rights through a demonstration. For example, the amphitheater just below the terrace where Mr. Witsit was speaking is a designated free speech zone, where he could have demonstrated without a permit. However, the Grandview Terrace where Mr. Witsit was speaking is not a designated demonstration area. So, as the Rangers explained, he could not legally demonstrate there without a permit. This restriction on speech through a permit requirement, which is known as a prior restraint, would likely be constitutional in this context. As we have discussed many times on ATA, the amount of protection that speech receives from the First Amendment varies depending on the location where an individual is speaking, with speech in traditional public forums receiving the most protection and speech in non-public forums receiving the least. In the 2010 case of Bordley v. U.S. Department of the Interior, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit rejected the argument that Mount Rushmore was a traditional public forum, stating that, quote, 
Mount Rushmore does not become a public forum merely by being called a national park any more than it would be transformed into a non-public forum if it were labeled a museum. The dispositive question is not what the forum is called, but what purpose it serves, either by tradition or specific designation. Therefore, a reasonable content-neutral restriction, such as the permit requirement, would likely be justified by the National Park Service's interests in, quote, avoiding interference with the park's activities and the operation of park facilities, and preserving peace and tranquility in the parks. However, it is important to note that the Boardley Court also decided that a park's First Amendment zones were, quote, designated public forums, which means that any restrictions in those areas would be subject to a higher level of scrutiny. In fact, the court in this case actually concluded that a prior version of Section 2.51 of Title 36 of the Code of Federal Regulations that did not allow small groups to demonstrate in these areas without a permit was an unconstitutional prior restraint on free speech. What's up? Do you have an ID? Am I being detained? Yes. yes. Okay, so suspicion of what crime? You are engaging in an activity that requires a permit. I mean, the Can I see the law yes. then? Let's go over here. And Why are you trying to move me away from my camera to cite it? Yeah. You're being really weird. Can you take your camera? No, you can just show it to me right now. Here, there's a whole bunch of information here. Don't touch me. <laughs> so, so um, to detain me, you have to articulate suspicion of crime. Yes, we, we've tried. Yeah. You keep interrupting. We offered you. So can I see it? Yeah. Uh, you haven't even cited it yet. You haven't cited the ordinance yet. What does it say? Specifically, read it. I'm not required to yeah, you do are. that. Yeah, you are. Uh, negative. Let him talk. So, Did you read the ordinance. Engaging, trying to. engaging in an activity requiring a permit. Okay, so specifically yeah. which part of what we're doing requires Using the permit? An audio device. Okay, so audio what's the decibel reading? Banner. You can't have it at all. So can I see the law? Yes. Sir. He's trying to explain this. I want to see the law. So what I'm going to need is your ID. Or I'm going to need you to give me your name and date of birth, state of your item. So I need to know. see the law. Are you, are you not yeah. listening? What we're going to do, I'm going to, if you fail to identify yourself, I'm going to arrest you for refusing to identify yourself. Wow. Number two, I'm going to confiscate all of this as evidence. After Mr. Witsit refuses to identify himself, the Rangers threaten to arrest him for failure to identify and to confiscate his video equipment. U.S. Park Rangers are federal law enforcement officers, which means they are generally authorized to enforce both federal laws and the laws of the state where the park is located. Additionally, Section 102701 of Title 54 of the United States Code permits Rangers to conduct investigations of offenses against the United States committed in the national park system. While the Rangers were certainly acting within their investigative authority by requesting that Mr. Witsit identify himself, they could not lawfully arrest him for refusing to do so, as neither the federal laws nor South Dakota's state laws criminalize failure to identify. However, a court would most likely conclude that the Rangers had probable cause to arrest Mr. Witsit for demonstrating without a permit, and since the video equipment was used during the offense, sees it as evidence. In the 1959 case of Draper v. United States, the Supreme Court determined that if police officers have probable cause to arrest an individual without a warrant, they may also search and seize related evidence during the arrest, holding that the officer in the case, quote, had probable cause and reasonable grounds to believe that Petitioner was committing a violation of the laws of the United States at the time he arrested him. The arrest was therefore lawful, and the subsequent search and seizure, having been made incident to that lawful arrest, were likewise valid. Generally, if the police seize an individual's non-contraband personal property as evidence for a criminal case, the government can hold it until the conclusion of the case. Although in some situations, some personal items may be recovered if they are not relevant to the prosecution. Therefore, a court would likely uphold at least the initial seizure of the video equipment incident to Mr. Witsit's arrest. Man, that's called theft, big tough guy. So let me, let me tell you what the law says. So whenever you have to come give a warning as to someone making yeah, yeah. Doing something illegal, yeah, and you. you have to cite the law and read yeah. what it says as yeah. what is prohibited. Engaging in activity requiring a permit. So what part of it requires the permit? Your audio device your audio and your device. banner. So can I read the law? Is that an unfounded yeah. request? I do not, I'm not required to print out and show you. You are, you are required to cite the ordinance okay. and say what it says. Okay, yeah. then I'll just research. Okay. I'll look it up. Say the ordinance just again. Keep your hands out of your pockets for me. Say the ordinance again, buddy. Do you have any weapons on you? Say the ordinance again. 36 CFR 1.6. 36 CFR 1.6. No. This is hilarious. I have to do your job for you. No problem. Sir, put your hands behind your back. For what? I'm going to take your phone. Put your hands behind your back. Are you kidding me? Nope. Wow. Put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. I'm under arrest. 
have to do is leave, man. Yeah. It's, it's, this Look, is public you property, bro. Brother, you had a chance. I asked you, you just to show brother. me the law, man. You keep interrupting. I asked, asked to see the law, dude. To you. You're going to know what the law yeah. is when you get addressed to it in the court are, of law. Are you kidding me yeah. right now? No, Why can't I just, do you know it's a, you know it's illegal no. to, to not tell me what the law says. And we've been trying, you keep interrupting. I've asked you 30 times. And I'm trying to explain 30 times. Okay, will you tell me what the law says then? You need to stop. You need to stop. Will you tell me what the law says? You need to stop. Mr. Witsit claims that the Rangers are legally required to verbally cite the law that they are issuing a citation for, and the Rangers disagree with his assertion. Contrary to popular belief, as the Supreme Court held in the 2004 case of Devin Peck v. Alford, quote, While it is assuredly good police practice to inform a person of the reason for his arrest at the time he is taken into custody, we have never held that to be constitutionally required. However, when an individual is arrested without a warrant, they must, quote, promptly be brought before a neutral magistrate for a judicial determination of probable cause, where they will learn what crime they are being charged with if they do not already know. While law enforcement officers are not required to inform suspects of the crime they're being arrested for, or recite the law they're suspected of violating, the Supreme Court case of Miranda v. Arizona identified certain information that officers must provide when they arrest an individual. In the landmark 1966 decision, the court identified three rights, commonly known today as Miranda rights, that arresting officers must inform suspects of before subjecting them to custodial interrogation. First, the court held that the suspect, quote, must first be informed in clear and unequivocal terms that he has the right to remain silent. Additionally, the court found that, quote, the warning of the right to remain silent must be accompanied by the explanation that anything said can and will be used against the individual in court, and that, quote, an individual held for interrogation must be clearly informed that he has the right to consult with a lawyer and to have the lawyer with him during interrogation. An important aspect of the Miranda rights discussion that is often overlooked is that these warnings are only required before the police interrogate an arrested suspect. This means that if a suspect is interrogated in police custody without being given Miranda warnings, any incriminating statements they make during the interrogation cannot be admitted against them in court. However, there is no such remedy available if the arresting officer fails to Mirandize an individual who was arrested but not interrogated. You just need to stop, my man. Okay? Wow. Please, please just, just, just calm down, okay? Please. No, I did not. I asked you to tell me what the law says. Look, 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 look. look. You was engaging a crime, engaging in activity, flying a permit. Setting up this speaker in the banner on the DVD. Tyrants, dude. After the Rangers arrested Mr. Witsit, the live stream continued for approximately two and a half more hours as the Rangers escorted the videographer off the park, seized the speaker and the sign as evidence, and wrote the videographer a citation after he provided his ID. When Mr. Witsit was eventually released, he and the videographer returned to the terrace and filmed Mr. Witsit as he once again expressed his beliefs, this time speaking directly to the camera. There were no further incidents with the Rangers during this time. Overall, the National Park Rangers get an A for actively working to de-escalate the situation, maintaining a calm and collected demeanor, and for remaining within the bounds of their authority throughout the interaction. The park rangers were well within their authority to confront Mr. Witsit and order him to vacate the premises. And although they appeared to misunderstand South Dakota's lack of identification statutes, the rangers had more than enough evidence to arrest Mr. Witsit nonetheless. The rangers did their best to inform Mr. Witsit of which statute he was violating, and offered him more than one opportunity to leave without issue. They even printed out the codes and relevant permit forms and presented them to Mr. Witsit multiple times. Eventually, the rangers were forced to arrest Mr. Witsit because he refused to provide the information necessary to issue a citation for the permit violation, but they allowed the videographer to leave after providing his ID and being issued a citation. The rangers handled this stop with professionalism and did their best to calm Mr. Witsit down. I commend the rangers for their patience and civility, and although their efforts to show Mr. Witsit the law were fruitless, I respect their dedication nonetheless. Mr. Witsit gets an F for unnecessarily escalating the encounter into an arrest, maintaining a hostile and condescending demeanor throughout the interaction, and for displaying a fundamental misunderstanding of free speech. Much of this interaction's escalation can likely be attributed to Mr. Witsit's failure to do his due diligence in regards to public forums and the First Amendment, and his willingness to double down on his own ignorance. Mr. Witsit had all the necessary evidence at his disposal to prove that he was, in fact, in violation of federal regulations, but he chose to ignore it, and many members of law enforcement have been criticized for the same conduct on this very channel. If Mr. Witsit had simply walked a few feet down to the amphitheater, he could have avoided this interaction entirely. 
and I find it difficult to believe that he had multiple interactions with members of law enforcement prior to this interaction and was never informed of where the free speech zones were located. It is entirely possible that Mr. Witsit knowingly violated the permit law as a form of protest against free speech restrictions, but there are certainly more productive locations to express that notion than a monument that many fellow citizens have spent time and effort traveling to. Mr. Witsit demonstrated a complete disregard for the other individuals visiting the monument, and lacked any serious understanding of the First Amendment and the law in general. Being asked to speak at the same volume as everyone else in the room is not a form of censorship. And this interaction highlights the notion that the limitations of free speech can be just as valuable as its protections. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for more police interaction content.